Um, well, for, for anybody who doesn't know me, I am Taylor Borst. I am Director of Marketing, PR, and Events here at American Solutions for Business. And so today we are gonna do exactly that. Um, it is time to explore all of those elements that go into merchandising and designing the perfect custom promo kit. So before we go into too far of a deep dive on this, because we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty details in just a sec, I'd like to point out that there are several ways to approach kitting right now in the market. So in addition to those vendors who have always been specializing in this solution, especially over the last year with everything going on with the pandemic and, and um, needing to drop ship, there has been an expansion. A lot of our incredible supplier partners out there have launched these pre-created kit options. They're beautiful collections. They work awesome. Um, we can actually share a few of those supplier partners in the comments below. I'm not going to go too far into that. So uh, whether you are choosing to do that single, you know, one and done partner with those suppliers out there who have already done these awesome collections, or if you're maybe opting for more of the sourcing each item separately, or maybe from a few different sources and bringing them all together with a uh, separate fulfillment, um, there, there's a lot to keep in mind. And that's what we're gonna go into today. So before we actually make any decisions when it comes to the tangible elements of your box, there are really three things that we need to determine. One is audience. So who is receiving the box? In this scenario, demographic is incredibly important to help determine the product, the messaging, application, everything. So we have to think about gender, location, um, especially when I'm working on internal projects at the corporate level. Um, you know, I can't always dive deep into the um, winter gear because we might be dealing with customers that live in the, the southern part of the United States. Um, same thing when it comes to gender and aesthetic and what that messaging needs to look like. Um, so audience is super important. The second piece here is intention. So upon opening this kitted box, what is your intended purpose and what's the emotional response? So do you want somebody to feel entertained, excited, uh, impressed, happy? Are you trying to inspire people to connect with each other, to engage with the brand, or maybe to take a certain action? Uh, you have to determine this goal and build the product messaging and aesthetic around that. So I think it's kind of interesting too, you know, historically, a lot of promo has often been used to help supplement an experience, right? So, you know, think about maybe implementing a custom notebook at a conference for, for people to take notes and then bring home with them. Or it, maybe it's a water bottle that you're handing out at a 5K to people who are running and walking in that. Or, you know, it could even be branded apparel or tech items that you're giving at a company picnic, or maybe it's a holiday party. Any of those scenarios are really promo that you're infusing into a physical space, into a physical experience here. But now in this context, we're really, you know, delivering that to the end, end user's door. Promo is the experience now. So it needs to have a more mindful approach. All right, so third, we are dealing with the million dollar question, which is budget. So in addition to the product itself, uh, you are going to have additional expenses that you need to quote, especially if it is kind of that build um, from the ground up experience. Um, so let's kind of dive into that because there's a lot at play here. So you're going to have to consider the cost of a custom box and how customized you want that to actually be. There are a lot of different resources in the promotional product uh, space where you can do custom boxes and that pricing is kind of all over the board. Uh, then we need to think about internal packaging needs. So think about bubble wrap, any sort of paper, maybe there's foam cutout options that you have to consider. Then we have the printed collateral. So what's actually going inside? You're going to want to have a product guide just so that somebody's not opening this up and all of a sudden they see all of these promo products, but there is absolutely no context, no messaging, no details, no call to action. That's not going to be as impactful. So you have to always think about that printed collateral that goes inside of the box, whether it's kind of a free floating piece or maybe it's a decal on the box itself as you open it up. 
Uh, also, things to consider here, if you want to add things like custom ribbon, custom decals, uh, maybe it's custom packaging tape for the actual outside of the box, um, that's all important to kind of elevate the entire experience here. But also consider things like the outer carton, maybe it's the bag or the wrap that actually goes around the box itself. Then we have our uh, fulfillment and our kitting costs too. So if you're pulling in a third party or maybe this is internal, maybe you have this option on your team, um, there are likely going to be costs associated with actually assembling the kit itself. Not to mention the shipping cost itself is going to be expensive, like expensive. Um, prepare your customer on the front end, help them understand that that's just going to be part of the cost of the entire experience here. So with that said, something that I cannot stress enough, with all of those added expenses that we just talked about, it is going to be really, really tempting to want to offset that cost by cutting corners on what's inside the box. Please, please urge your customers not to fall into this trap. So in this industry, we advocate for strategic placement of print and promo all day long. Everybody who's on this uh, webinar right now, you understand that the best way to waste marketing spend is to choose the wrong product or products. So in this scenario, the stakes are even higher. So the loss is greater if what's inside isn't aligned with the purpose and the expectation because there are all of those other costs associated with it. It's not just choosing the wrong piece of drinkware and wasting you know, $5 per piece. It's that cost of the piece along with everything else that you're incorporating to get that experience to the end user's door. So something to really, really consider and try to coach your customers through during this time. All right, so once we have determined all of the answers to those fun questions that we just covered, it's time to actually build the box. This is where it gets really, really fun, um, but it can get pretty overwhelming. You know, where do we even start? Once we know the answers to all of that, how do we actually choose the products that are inside or coach our customers through that decision making process? So. To break this down, I've actually split it into six tips for product selection. So first, let's go with um, a great starting point here is to focus on the top five promo categories. So really try to build it around apparel, drinkware, bags, writing instruments, and technology. So not to say that you have to absolutely have one thing that falls into each of those categories, but it is a great place to start and then just kind of build around that, right? So maybe you want to switch things out that are um, kind of in a different category or you want to get a little creative with what you're, you're choosing to, to put for those five. Uh, number two, we have to consider the five senses. So include a product selection that has a mix of touch, sight, smell, taste, and hearing. Some are gonna be much easier than others, so we'll get into this. So, so first, let's talk about touch. This is gonna probably be a, a fairly simple one here, um, but the tip to touch is try to include a variety of different textures. So maybe it's some really soft fabrics, matte finishes, maybe it's that smooth marble, shiny metallic, like really get different senses when somebody opens up that box so that they're stimulated in, in that sense. Uh, next, we have sight. So this is one where um, you're going to need to bring in maybe your graphic designer in the mix. Uh, it's, it's also in just the products that you're choosing as well. It's incorporating those colors, the complementing aesthetic, and really captivating that imagery within the custom pieces. So whether that's actually the, the custom art that goes into the box, maybe it's those additional pieces like custom tape or ribbon, um, or the actual products themselves. Um, you can really accomplish a lot of that. Uh, and then smell. So consider all of the products that incorporate essential oils, uh, candles. Lip balm is a really great one for our industry, especially because it's very cost effective, but you can elevate it to feel very retail. 
um, incorporating that, you know, lotion, other personal care items are, are always a great go-to, but also consider things like wood and leather products as well, because they're going to have more of that um, earthy, subtle smell to them. But if you've ever had um, like a laser engraved wood piece before, the smell is such a homey and recognizing um, smell that a lot of people don't really think about when they're incorporating that into their mix. All right, and then we have taste. So, you know, shout out to our suppliers who offer those food gifts. Really consider the chocolate, cheese, cookies, wines. Um, a lot of time when we are talking about food gifts, it's really great to pair with those tangible items that you're gonna keep for a really long time because you kind of get to have that experience in the immediate and then the rest of the items that you're merchandising around are going to stick with you for much longer. But it does, kind of bring another dimension into your offering. All right, and then the last uh, the last sense that we're gonna talk about, this is probably uh, the, the biggest hurdle for a lot of people, but it is that hearing, that sound. So uh, you, you, you'll have to get a little creative here, but it can be accomplished through things like tech products. So maybe it's a Bluetooth speaker, anything that has more of that sound incorporating it. Um, maybe it's a multimedia ele element. So adding in NFC. So if you're not familiar with that, NFC stands for near field communication. So you're able to actually embed that into a lot of different promotional products. We have some great vendors out there as well. So maybe you're embedding it into a pen or a notebook or a piece of drinkware. So then all you really have to do is tap your phone to the NFC tag. And then from there, you can allocate that to go to really any link. So it could go to a video, it could go um, to a homepage, anything like that is going to bring them in and have that other sense really checked off there. Um, and it creates a more memorable experience and kind of makes, makes that closer connection that you're going for. All right, so that covers it for those five senses. So next third on our list here, uh, we hit on this just a little bit earlier, but really, really stressing that the products inside have to complement each other rather than compete. So it's going to be helpful to consider those colors, materials, decoration techniques. They all create this or comprehensive look together, and it doesn't feel like there's you know, a couple items that are really, really just overshadowing the others. There has to be this balance to all of it. All right, and then four, you know, we did talk about those uh, key categories that are a great place to start and then build off of, but it is really smart to include an unexpected item or two. So keep them on their toes. It's maybe something playful, funny, memorable. Uh, for this item, it's okay to maybe keep it at that lower priced uh, point item just so that it's balancing out and it's not overshadowing uh, anything, but something that's just really memorable. So uh, maybe you pick something that's super trendy or you know will just make them laugh or uh, want to share what they just got. Okay, number five on our list here, don't overwhelm them with too many products. So a lot of this is going to depend, again, on that first piece that we talked about when we're talking about audience intention, um, everything that needs to go into the box, there's not going to be that perfect number. Um, typically, uh, at least my experience, uh, when I've merchandised these boxes, I do try to keep it somewhere between the six and nine number, um, just because it's not going to completely overwhelm them, but they still feel like they're getting something substantial. Um, but again, that could totally, totally be adjusted. And a lot of it depends on what that price point and budget that you're working with looks like. Um, so just something to consider. You don't want to feel like any of those products are lost or overlooked inside that box. All right. And then number six here, for choosing the items, include a value range. So incorporate items that are really across the pricing spectrum so that you feel like it's more well-rounded, especially if you're using any of these boxes to help um, spark future orders. You know, you wanna be able to give them kind of that good, better, best spectrum. So why not do that in the box and help them um, just feel more rounded out? All right. So now that we've kind of covered choosing what goes in the box, one of my biggest and kind of final-ish points is don't ship and dip. 
So don't just send the box to the end users and dip out you need to stick with it. There has to be engagement with the audience before, during, and after they receive their custom kit. It can look like a lot of different things. It can be a call, an email, a text. You could post it on social. You have to get them engaged in that before, during, and after context so that they're constantly involved and really locked in on what you're doing from an experiential standpoint. So not only that, but the audience also has to be encouraged and incentivized to share their responses with you and on social media. So getting them to share that experience is actually going to create a much bigger impact because you're replicating that over and over and over, even to people who maybe didn't even receive that shipment themselves. So you're getting kind of that free uh, press a little bit or that free exposure, and you're creating more excitement and more value on the customer. So you can do this in a few different ways. So incorporating a hashtag, that is always a smart thing to do, especially if you want to track organic content and posts. It's a really great way. I think sometimes people get so excited with using hashtags and adding it to their social posts that they actually forget about the essence of the hashtag, which is to create a sub community that doesn't just exist within your followers. So if you include a hashtag on anything, anybody can search for that hashtag and look at that content. So that's a great way for you to, after the program is finished, do, um, you know, do some post launch analysis look at the content that has been searched for under that hashtag and you'll be able to come to your customer and say look at all of these posts you got x amount of engagement this many posts this many likes this many comments and you can give them hard data back that sometimes we don't get to provide for the end user customer in promo because roi is uh it can be a little tricky sometimes so um better yet beyond just creating that hashtag help them create a post competition. So the, the winner maybe receives a high end promo product or a custom recognition piece. So not only in that scenario, are you helping to increase the success of the original initiative, you're actually training the end user to execute your intended action and create a cycle back to more promotional products that you're providing to the customer. So in addition to that, you can also record your own unboxing videos or encourage the end user to do so. But what you're doing by creating that content yourself is to help the audience understand your expertise and your value add that you're bringing to the table. You're not just putting products in a box. You are completely engineering the entire experience from step one to step something beautiful, memorable, and successful for your customer.